Your Excellency, you are most graciously invited to make a few remarks. I thank you, Your Excellency. Excellency is the former Prime Minister and our former Vice President, all distinguished guests, including our Honorable Speakers. Your Excellency, your assent to the IBC Amendment Bill, being the first of the National Dialogue Committee uh, report bills, one of the nine bills, Your Excellency, marks the beginning of a very important process to our country in the reconstitution of a new IEBC Commission. Your Excellency, let me take this opportunity to assure you and the country that all the other eight bills that uh, emanated from the NADCO report are in process in both houses. We had divided the bill between the two houses of parliament, and I want to give all of you assurances of both houses that we shall expedite in the processing of these bills with top priority. Your Excellency, in conclusion, let me just say that this assent of this bill not only marks a hallmark in our nation's endeavor to reconstitute a new IBC, but also buttresses the importance of dialogue in our country because these bills have emanated from a process where we all came together as a country to dialogue and through dialogue we've been able to surmount most of the challenges that faced our country at the time we came together as NADCO. And I am certain, Your Excellency, even now and moving forward, this signifies that new move that through dialogue we can talk to each other and be able to surmount all the challenges that be of our country. With those few remarks, Your Excellency, allow me to invite my co-chair, our former Vice President, who co-chaired with me the NADCO process, to give his brief remarks. Mr. President, the Honorable William Samuel Rapruto, Prime Minister Raila Odinga, both co-principals of the NADCO process. Ladies and gentlemen, I didn't find it easy to come in here this morning for various reasons, one of which was the barricading of the route to KICC. But I must thank um, the organizers for having brought it to KICC, because if it was a state house, Mr. President, it would even have been a little harder. The reason is simple. Our country is at a crossroads. My colleague, Honorable Kimani Chungwa, has highlighted that we, both of you, asked us to undertake the process of NADCO following the 2023 enactment of the Finance Bill and, and the riots that took place, where we lost people, 75 of them, property was destroyed, and the country was in a state of a shock. We undertook that responsibility with gusto, and we are very open-minded. As Azmiul Omoja One Kenya, our number one topic was the high cost of living. Makimani and the team on Kenya Kwanza convinced us that it was the government responsibility and the opposition had nothing to do with discussing the high cost of living. I hope that in the light of recent developments, 
my friend Kimani would have revised that thought. Because again, 2024, Finance Act and the riots, and again we have lost 41 young Kenyans. This time they came in the form of Gen C, but they are Kenyans. They have a right to belong. In fact, they are carrying the national flags. They have done it better than we did when some of us nearly got killed. Mr. President, I want to urge that we look at our country afresh. You, there's no way we can wish away the Gen C revolution. And if we were to begin to be honest with ourselves, perhaps we need now to go back to bombers because during the presentations, Kimani and Chiruyot may remember, and Wandai was deputizing me, that a lot of Kenyans wanted us to open this space. The space has been opened by Gen C. I wish we had moved with speed. It has taken inordinate delay to get to where we are today to get the first product out of NADCO. And I'm not so sure, my friend Kimani, whether it is, <laughs> it is expected of us to even fast track the other eight. They have to be juxtaposed by the reality of the country and this new revolt. If we are not careful, all of us will get thrown out by the Gen Cs because they say we have come of age. You say that we are leaders of tomorrow, we are leaders now. We can't wish them away. Therefore, I want to urge that we now look at the whole thing. For example, we have now set up the process of nominating new commissioners. We made it very clear that uh, both uh, you, Mr. President, Mr. Raila Odinga, the Prime Minister, will have to agree on perhaps, most importantly, on who becomes the chair of the new IBC. That principle of consultation was inbuilt, and I thank my colleagues because we didn't have to struggle much to agree. But now is the time. The country is at a crossroads. Can we, for a beginning, even you know, in order to bring the country to normalcy, can you, Mr. President, order the Inspector General of Police, if he doesn't resign, can he remove the police from the streets? Can the army get out of our streets and back to the barracks? I thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency, former Vice President. I now have the honor to invite uh, the former Prime Minister, Your Excellency, Honorable Raila Odinga, to give his remarks. And thereafter, 